This is the Nike Hercules Bats A battery, 51st Artillery, Army Air Defense Command. This is a missile museum now. In 1971, this base was closed, and in 1973, a group of people got together and started restoring it uh, to do restoration on military vehicles and uh, kind of fit in with the rest of the park scheme um, as a museum or an interpretation center. So the Nike Hercules base, we've been working on it since the mid-70s. Uh, we have 14 missiles here, and all of the equipment is part of the original. And the base has basically been restored to the way it was when I was stationed here in 1969. So all the equipment and stuff that you see here was all part of the missile system. Now, we have Ajax, um, which was the first of the Nike system missiles to be deployed. Uh, these were all missile sites. To give you an idea of what the numbers and stuff are like, there were 11 of these sites around the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, each one is exactly the same. They both consist of two batteries with six missiles each, so there's 12 missiles at each site. Uh, the Nike Ajax was a, a booster-fired air defense weapon system. Uh, this is the guidance system on the missile, and these are to give it some control over its trajectory or flight path, whichever way it's going to go. Um, so the guidance system controls the missiles. It had antennas on it, which communicated its, the missile's condition to the radar computers and also sent back a signal telling the missile where to go. This is the primary warhead. They were plastic explosive. Uh, these little squares are the shrapnel. This, as the missile exploded, these would disperse to form a cone. This was a hyperbolic fuel system. Uh, what that means is that when you mix these liquids together, they explode and form the thrust for the primary, the rocket, part of the missile system. So you can see that there's three tanks here. Then in the back is the secondary warhead. This helped uh, give the explosion more power and broke up the missile into large, smaller pieces. This would enable it to cover a larger area uh, for, in order to hit whatever kind of an airplane was coming in. Then here, the missile fits into the booster. Just gravity holds it in when it's sitting on the launcher. There's nothing special on it. It has a cable that comes from the booster that goes to the rocket motor that pulls out like a hand grenade pin when the booster drops off and that ignites the rocket motor. This is the booster section. The squib here, when the missile is fired, this explodes, shoots hot gases and particles. The total length of the booster, these are called vibrating rods. They shake as the solid fuel breaks up and develops the thrust out the back. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. Now this is the first air defense missile systems that were deployed for Nike. Then, because of the performance of airplanes kept changing, you would go higher altitudes and faster speeds. Um, just before the Hercules system was deployed was about the time they finished the building the sites for the Nike Ajax. So the Ajax was kind of a short-lived missile system. Um, it was very dangerous to work with. The, the propellants and stuff had to be put in here in this assembly area. And the building that you're in right now is a warhead building. So in here, we made the warhead with the missile that comes out of the assembly building between the guidance section and the missile body. This is a complete Nike Ajax. So you can see what it looks like without being cut away. And over here on this side is what's called an RCAP. These were the remote controlled targets that were used at Fort Bliss, Texas. And these were the targets that the, would be flown. And this is what you would track and shoot the missiles at. And every year, every Nike Hercules launcher crew and integrated fire control crew would go to Fort, Fort Bliss, Texas, build a missile, calibrate it, calibrate all the launching equipment, and then fire and shoot down 
an RCAP, one of these remote control planes.